Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Alien Protocols. Um, <clears throat> this is an episode that's very dear to me. <clears throat> it is about um, basically my namesake. At the beginning of this channel, I have been called AP, and a lot of people thought it was because of advanced protocols, but it's not. It's because of astral projection, which is the um, kind of my most accurate uh, form of ESP, or at least the method that I have found has been uh, conducive to producing some of the most startling, stunning, accurate uh, work that I've done. And <clears throat> I've done some really stunning stuff with controlled remote viewing, uh, very detailed color drawings, um, images that were almost exact replicas. Um, and I've had, you know, a couple failures here and there. But even those had um, very interesting hits. So, um, and it's a nice time now. We're involved in several different really fascinating projects that uh, we're going to be telling you guys about soon as they develop more and as we just ensure that these projects are worthwhile of bringing to your guys' attention and your time and efforts. But uh, some really exciting stuff is going on. But first, let's dive into this astral projection issue. And I think it's taken a while to get to this point to be able to talk about this subject because it requires absorbing so much of the previous information. Of course, stillness and meditation and going to that place where you can access the Lyman easier <clears throat> is a key aspect of this. And um, we notice from Sanskrit, from Hinduism, there's something called chitta <clears throat> or chitti. It is also called, not shitty, chitti. And it is the there's many different uh, descriptions of the human mind and of consciousness and how consciousness works in many different ways. But chitti or chitta, chitti is that center portion of the mind, that center master control that is very difficult to get gain access to. And through meditation, you gain greater and greater access to this chitti. And this is the core. It's um, it's kind of like the direct connection to the universe almost. It's kind of like that master mind at the center. It's kind of like, uh, how to describe it? Um, in a computer program, it would be the operating system. Um, and that operating system has the ability to connect with something else called uh, Shiva, which is what we've been calling on this channel, the Lyman what Ingo Swan called the quintessence, what many call the monad or the Akashic record, or what Dr. Vernon Nepi calls the consciousness field. Whatever it is, we haven't figured it out specifically yet in terms of science. We haven't nailed down specifically what this is, but many different cultures from many different directions, we realize there is this substructure to reality. And this substructure to reality holds up the reality that we perceive. And if you can go from our reality into this substructure, you have access to everything, everywhere, every time. And that location, the Shiva or the Lyman or the Monad or the Source or the Oneness or whatever you want to call it, is a wellspring of all of these different parapsychological phenomena. From the spiritualist activities of the um, 1800s, uh, Dr. Hume, who would do incredible acts of <clears throat> levitation and uh, playing instruments without touching them, and <clears throat> to controlled remote viewing. And you can see this stuff has a 2,000 year history. If you go back into Sanskrit, Hinduism, and Buddhism, and you go back into the ancient texts, and they say time and time again, one of the phrases I love to say, uh, if you still your mind like the surface of a lake, you can reflect the universe. <clears throat> and so in order to get to this point where we're discussing astral projection, you have to understand these other things. And you also have to understand some aspects of virtue. Now, we haven't discussed virtue enough on this channel, but virtue is what gives power to these different abilities. Yes, you can contact your, your chitty and use that to contact the Lyman and have a very strong connection. <clears throat> but it won't be as potent 
if your virtue is low. Um, so I just thought that was kind of an important thought to explore with you. And um, we're going to dive right in and just go over this document with you, a little brief document I've prepared to kind of give you um, <clears throat> a little bit more insights into astral projection. <clears throat> it's important to remember, though, that um, many months ago when we were talking about Buddhism and we were talking about um, the mind-body connection, we mentioned something called the monomayakaya, and that is the mind-made body we all feel a little uncomfortable in our physical bodies. And that's because we are more than these bodies. And that thing that we are more of is called the monomayakaya, which essentially is, the example is a sword in a sheath. And that the sheath is your body, and that the sword is really the real you, your spirit, your essence, your strength. And that's where the real strength and everything comes from. And together, they represent your modern current consciousness. So you have to get an understanding of separating those two. And that's only gonna come from meditation and from working on these skills, all of these skills that we've been talking about, but especially meditation. There are herbs and other things you can do as well to reach these states, to increase theta waves uh, and so forth. But it's important to understand right off the bat that astral projection is not daydreaming, it is not imagining, it is a very different function. That is a left brain um, function. Um, astral projection is more of a right brain function. Actually, here I put left brain, but it's a, I, I'm going to change that right now. It's more of a right brain function. <clears throat> and um, you're kind of following your subconscious lead. The same thing with so many of these aspects of ESP and Psy, where you go with your gestalt, you go with your subconscious, you try and listen to that signal. Um, and it's very important you say then, then how can I, but how can I do this? How do I go places in my mind if I'm not giving it direction? Well, you do in a very broad context and then you let yourself go. You let your subconscious go there and do what it does. You do not lead the experience. Like when you walk into a new town, you can control the fact that you're walking to the new town, but you don't control what you see there in that new town. And that's kind of the exact analogy, trans transcribed analogy that many Buddhist monks have kind of propagated throughout history to let you know how to do this astral projection. So um, I'll walk you through the process here very topically, because each one of these things that I mentioned require a lot of different exploration. But first, of course, is you meditate and you melt away from your day and you melt away from all your physical senses and these stupid modern monkey mind goals and things we think we need in modern society. And you do that separation. You work on that monomayakaya, separating the body from the mind. And with astral projection, you are <laughs> implored to make a connection with a cord, an astral cord. And an astral cord is essentially a cord that you imagine going from your belly button to your belly button, the belly button of your monomayakaya to your physical body. So you spend a great deal of time at the beginning part of the meditation, seeing your body from above. Very, very, very important. You see your body in your cord and you concentrate on seeing all the things around your body. Just don't do it quickly and then leave. You have to look at your body from above and see the different things you see. And you may notice things that you didn't notice from ground level. You may have little mini ESP experiences of things around you, but don't get distracted by that. <clears throat> Work on that body separation. See the self and see the cord. And you're always suggested, instead of going from that place of flying above yourself to the location you want to go to. Instead of doing that, you're always implored to go to space first. For some reason, <clears throat> in many of the texts, it mentions this repeatedly. You go to space first. Um, and then you allow, you let your conscious mind say, okay, I want to go investigate this thing. And this has been pre-established before the meditation and maybe even a little bit during the meditation. But once you've separated yourself, you see your body, you see your core, you have that connection, you know that they're connected, then you go to space. And then from space, you go to the location. 
And by in going to the location, you just go. Don't force it, don't push it, none of that stuff, you just go. Um, just as it says here, letting yourself travel through your subconscious, let your subconscious be the guide. Now, preventing your left brain and your constructed brain from coming in too much takes a lot of practice because this creative part of your left brain and the creative part of your right brain, they both want to try and compete. So it's not a, a function of creating a vision. There is a vision already there. There's an experience already there waiting for you that's already in your mind, that's already in the Shiva, that's already in the Lyman. So let that experience come to you. Let that experience come to you. Don't go to it. If you were at any point in this process, let's say you've already gone to space and then you've gone to your location and then you're having trouble at your location. If you're ever having trouble, go back to concentrating on your cord and your connection. Um, that's a real easy way to get back grounded again before you lose the whole thing. Go back to the cord, go back to its qualities, um, and go back to the connection between your physical body and your monomyakaya. Um, it's very, very, very important to sense that separation and that there are different things and what they both are because that achieves more success with your monomyakaya. Um, so, and then also remember just what I'm saying that you are this spirit body, that you are this greater essence, and this greater essence is free of the restrictions of being in the sheath. It's free. It's so important to remember that. And then at the end, you must, once you've achieved your goals, um, when done, you always return to the body. You follow your cord back to your body, return to the sheath, take a couple moments to come back. And that's it, again. It's that simple. Um, but also infinitely complex. Um, if anyone would like more information on this, it would be a pleasure to share it with you. Um, I implore you to explore yourself. Invest some time in yourself. You cannot waste time exploring yourself. It is impossible. It's a very, very valuable pursuit. And uh, if you'd like to test me even, where are you now? What are you doing? I've been tested a lot, especially lately. And uh, you know, you can read about these things and you can hear testimonials from 100 people and see videos from 100 different people, but it's very, very different when you experience it yourself time and time again. Um, anyway, gang, that's it. We'd love to talk more about this subject and uh, experiences. And in fact, we may do a live meditation and walk you through this process, walk you through the actual meditation. It'll be a very long and boring video, especially in terms of the meditation part. But um, we may uh, essentially give you a guided meditation through it coming up soon. Uh, several people have mentioned that they've wanted a guided meditation for this stuff and one specifically with our methods. So we're gonna do that in the near future. Some of you may find it incredibly boring, but it is the heart of what we do here. Anyway, much love gang. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Um, if you like what we're doing, if you support what we're doing, if you realize that we have gone two steps past the average people who are just rehashing UFO information, we've gone to the heart of this issue. We know the heart of this issue is consciousness, and we know that there's a tremendous amount of abilities and undiscovered powers essentially waiting for us in this realm. Gifts of understanding, gifts that come from attaining virtues. These are not gifts to do selfish, earthly things. These are gifts to do good. And um, it's, if you enjoy what you're seeing here, please let us know. Uh, give us comments below. If you'd like to support us, please uh, you can see our PayPal below or be a Patreon member. And uh, thank you so much for your time in watching this video. Much love, gang.